What's going on guys? My name is Taylor or Captain Obvious and today I'm coming at you guys with another uh, just regular old commentary but I want to just talk to you guys about something and in the background you'll see a little bit of Origins gameplay. Uh, this was actually from a live stream I did today which is the, let me check my phone, 4th. So I did a live stream on the 4th and uh, you know it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of people come in from, the, uh, from YouTube. I posted a little video saying that I was live streaming and I got a few followers just from straight up Twitch. <coughs> Wow, man, my uh, my throat right there just got really dry. Uh, but anyway, so I uh, I did that and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. If you're wondering here, I do actually have three staffs. It's easy to do if you just have um, one staff. You can't have an actual gun. You can only have a staff, and you have to have it upgraded. You press left on the D-pad. It'll bring out your reviving uh, tool, which I believe is something's something. <laughs> that was pretty bad, but I can't remember the name of it. Anyways, you bring that out, you pull it out, and um, then you swap for another staff with that out. Only in Agartha will it work, though. So, um, unfortunately, uh, you can't have it, like, in a podium down near, uh, uh, down near what's it called, and it won't work. So, you can't do that, but, you know, it's, it's still a pretty cool thing, and uh, I definitely recommend it if you're interested in having more than one staff. I know that here I have the ice staff, the fire staff, and the electric staff, my three favorite staffs, so... Anyways, getting on to the topic, the topic I wanted to talk about today was something that um, I've been thinking about a lot lately, and by a lot, I mean like I've been discussing it with a lot of people, like good friends, uh, the people I've been live streaming with on Twitch, um, just people in general, I've just been talking about this a lot, and I feel like, you know, a lot of people have gone over this, but I'm just going to tell you my own thoughts on like the best zombies maps, and I haven't decided yet if I want to break it down game by game. So like the World at War maps, then the Black Ops 1 maps, and then the Black Ops 2 maps. And so what I think I'm going to do for right now is start off with World at War, and I'm going to see how long it goes, and if it goes like like really long, then I'm going to just break it up into two videos or something. So let's start off with World at War. Now as you all know, World at War came out in 2008, and 2008 is a long time ago now, it's like six years ago, almost... Yeah, six years ago that uh, World at War came out, which is incredible. You know, there's been six Call of Duty since then. And for me, how I got into World at War, I actually, uh, I wasn't allowed to have M games. And so I had an Xbox 360, and for Christmas, I asked for World at War or Gears of War 2. And, you know, Christmas comes along, I open up all my presents, and instead of getting either of those, I get the game Pure, which is an e-game, ATV game. You know, and that was a fun game for a while, but I really wanted to get World at War. So my parents were like, all right, well, if you want to get it, you're going to have to pay for it yourself because we won't buy an M game for you. So I ended up buying World at War and got really into it really quick. Immediately beat the campaign so I could get to Nazi zombies because I already knew that there was a Nazi zombies. And uh, I was just... Right there, I almost died. I was, f I was like, oh my god. On the live stream, I was like, oh my god, I almost died there. But um, you know, I was, I was so into Nazi zombies. I'd bring friends over and we'd play four player split screen. Um, you know, until the wee hours of the night, just playing four player on Nocturne and Toten. Um, online, I found a bunch of cool guys who. And back then, I was a really bad squeaker. So shout out to all the guys that uh, you know, stuck with me even though I was a really bad squeaker back then. But uh, you know, I had so much fun on Nocturne and Toten. Yeah, as you all know, actually, if you don't know the map, basically, it's just three different rooms. There's the main area you spawn in, there's the room with the box, and then there's the upstairs. And that's about it. There's three main areas you can be, and uh, there's no perks, so you don't have Juggernaug, uh, you don't have slight Speed Cola, you don't have any of that. Um, and then besides that, we have a mystery box and a few weapons on the wall. I think the Thompson was like the best gun you can get on the wall at the time. So, you know, it, it was, an, um, it, you know, and besides that, it was such an amazing map. Um, it was the, the nostalgia factor puts it right up there with some of the best of them. Um, I, you know, I can always go back to a good old World at War Nocturne Toten map, and it just, it just blows me away at how awesome that map is. Um, so, you know, anyways, Nocturne Toten, fantastic map. Huge replayability factor and, you know, just getting to high rounds with the flamethrower running around the bottom room with the box with the flamethrower and the ray gun is just, is, is unparalleled. Classy. Extremely. Anyways, moving on to the next map. First DLC of World at War brought in the map Verruckt. And now Zombies Verruckt was a very different map. You started off in two places. Two players spawn on one side of the map, two players spawn on the other, and you couldn't get to each other until you had opened the power room. 
And now to get to that, it was obviously on the other side of the of the little asylum because Zombies Vera takes place in an asylum. So anyways, after you, uh, you know, managed to turn on the power, there was the mystery box and they introduced perks. Now the first perk was obviously Juggernogs, Speed Cola, Double Tap, and um, Quick Revive. And now this was not during the time where you could use quick revive to lift yourself up basically quick revive did nothing um in world at war um so you know as if you're playing solo you never did that um you only have one shot if you're playing solo if you're playing co-op quick revive might be worth it uh, but anyways the cool thing about that map was you know the introduction of the perk and also the introduction of the versatility on that map you know you felt like you could really go to a lot of different places and find a lot of really great camping spots and, you know, that's why I thought that Varric was an awesome map. Um, by the way, here, if you're wondering, we're just actually, he's trying to, like, we were live streaming, we were kind of tired of playing this map, so we decided to go for the uh, the punches over here. So he was trying to punch everybody, and then we just decided to see how long we could go without um, perks after we all got down. But anyways, the introduction of the, uh, like I said, perks along with the versatility of the map, it was awesome. You know, you could get the bar and or the browning with the bipod and, you know, glitch your uh, bipod onto someone's head onto the rails and it was awesome you could like set up have infinite ammo you know it was just an awesome um map with a lot of new things and a lot of new glitches the glitch that i really really enjoyed however was the uh the glitch, the glitch that i really enjoyed was where you could kill yourself um, up by the kitchen and you could spawn under the map and run out into the center of the map by the fountain and you could actually get on the mg which had infinite ammo i thought that was just awesome and uh, you know you could run around the map get on top of the roofs and stuff i thought that was just an epic thing to have but uh, you know our, the next map is shinonuma and now shinonuma was an amazing map that's probably my favorite well i can't actually say that yet can i but uh shinonuma was an amazing map you know it introduced there was no power in it but it introduced the ability to use to really use traps to your advantage you know Verak, there were traps but they didn't really do much besides the one on the on the walkway and even that one you know was was eh so but uh you, you know the, the shinonuma you know they had the flogger um you had the, the um the what's it called the uh Oh my god, the gondola type thingy, the little trolley thing that took you from different places. Um, it was a huge map, there was swamps, um, you were slowed down by the swamps. Um, it was just an amazing map, and uh, I thought that they really handled it well. Then there was the introduction of the Wonder Waff on Shinonuma. And now the Wonder Waff was such an amazing wonder weapon for everyone. Everyone loved it, everyone was fighting to get it, everyone was trying to get to the box first to get the Wonder Waff. And if someone else got it, you were like, ah, fuck you, you know? It was just an amazing weapon, and I absolutely loved it. That, to go along with the spooky atmosphere and the incredible just dynamics of the map, was absolutely fantastic. And because of that, I really felt that um, Shinonuma was an incredibly made map, and it was just it was just awesome. Um, the last the last and final map was actually um, Darius, and now Darius was an introduction of so many new things you know there was the pack a punch um, there were so many traps it was tight corners some open spaces um, you know you the pack a punch was just an amazing new thing um, there was little Easter eggs hidden in with Samantha and you could call up, up Samantha and play a game with her um, it was just an incredible map so the hellhounds were introduced actually the hell trails were introduced in Shinonuma but I felt they were really refined in uh, Darius because you know they crouched around and didn't really attack you until you uh, were in their line of sight, so and they started getting introduced along with zombies starting on round 16, so you could like really get caught in a corner by them, and they'd stalk around the corner, you'd run into them, and then they'd all of a sudden, boom, jump on you, you know, you couldn't really predict where they were coming from. I thought the hellhounds were perfected. I thought so much about the map was just improved from Shinonuma, and um, they, that, was, that was really, there was really nothing hugely wrong about Darius besides the Wonder Waff glitch which took away your juggernaut that was the only thing that I have against Darius and it might be a, a little detractor on the final verdict anyway so now to get on to the final verdict of these four maps you know we have Nocturne Toten the Nostalgia Verruck the first introduction of Perks Shinonuma with the Wonder Waff and the traps and the huge open runaround spaces and Darius with the Pack-a-Punch and the improved um, you know just overall gameplay in my opinion, Verruck, although it was an amazing map, and I'm not saying in any way that it was bad, although although all of that, I have to say Verruck, my least favorite out of the four. Then 
you know, I think I really got to go with taking out Nocturne and Toad. Nocturne and Toad was such a good map. I never have a problem playing it. But you know what? In comparison to Shinonuma and Darius, I got to take it off the list. Um, and then we're down to the last two, Shinonuma and Darius. Now, like I was saying, Darius is a little bit of a refinement. You you know, you had the, uh, the catwalk strategy that you could stand up on that catwalk for days with your friends with upgraded pack-a-punched MGs and Brownings and just spray down that line. It was amazing. Um, Shinonuma, you had the huge roundabout. You could run around with the uh, Wonder Waff and just really embrace the gloomy atmosphere. It was fantastic. I have super fond memories of both of them. Um, but the final verdict I'm going to have to give it to is Shinonuma. Now, you know, I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me and think that, oh, you know, Darius was such a better map and well, better made. And yeah, that's true that, you know, they introduced the monkey bombs. I don't think that was on. No, that wasn't on Shinonuma, you know. Darius was an amazing map, and they're so close, it's really hard to tell. But if I have to pick a number one, I got to go with Shinonuma. It just, it's got to be for me. You know, that's the, that's the one I got to round 157 on or something like that. You know, I know that's not very high, considering it's Shinonuma World at War, and it's so easy to go high rounds. But, you know, that map, I think I have the best memories of World at War on is Shinonuma. So, I really got to go with that. Anyways, guys, you know what? It's already been 11 and a half minutes. I'm, I'm really going to have to split these up into two segments or into three different segments because, you know, there's just too much to cover in one in one video. Um, so anyways, you guys, let me know what you guys thought was your favorite World at War map. If you enjoyed more than one, let me know. Tell me why it was your favorite one, you know? And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like. You know, I really got a lot of support on the last video with uh, you know, over 30 likes, which is awesome, and over 200 views. Incredible considering I had taken like a one-week break. So I really wanted to make it up with to you guys and bring you guys a high quality video i know i've been having so many voice cracks and i don't know what all that's all about maybe i'm just a little tired or throat dry or something like that but uh maybe i'm going through a second puberty who knows wouldn't that be crazy came out all buff and strong and six-pack and mm, muscles but anyways hope you all enjoyed my name has been taylor if you did like i said make sure to leave a like leave your comment with what your favorite map is and i'll see you guys in part two where we talk about black ops one peace out guys